Why are people so obsessed with those 90s Japanese cars? Well, let's rewind to the late 70s. Japan was grappling with a slew of fatal car accidents. To put the brakes on these issues, Japanese car manufacturers struck a deal, a gentleman's agreement. Now, what's a gentleman's agreement? It's basically an unofficial pact between different parties. No production car in Japan could go beyond 276 brake horsepower and 180 kilometers per hour. That meant even with a decade of advancements, models like the R32 GTR and R34 GTR showed the same horsepower on paper. But here's the kicker. Japanese manufacturers still chase the title of the fastest car. They'd beef up engines and chassis, all while keeping horsepower figures steady, at least on paper. But reality bites. When these JDM cars hit the global scene, dyno tests revealed much higher horsepower. Many high-performance models were noticeably toned down during production to play by the rules of the gentleman's agreement. These cars were built for tweaking. With a bigger turbo here, those 90s JDM cars could hang with the big boys, even supercars. 